Where are you following Capers? Speaking of plot... Cap capers is what we get up to every Sunday. No, you get up to shenanigans. Who has a hundred word summary of the shenanigans you guys got up to last week? Uh, McDole are, has the fly spell and he exercised his right to use it. McDole, yeah. would you say you have yeah. a right to the fly spell? Um, Mephistopheles said so, so yeah, I guess. <laughs> He didn't say no. So what? What did you do with your with your fly spell? I went to go visit our uh, one of the new candidates, or not new, but one of the candidates to be who, who is vying for kingship, and he is very much vying for it, considering he pulled up right into the king's you know parking space. <laughs> that was your fault, though. That was your I fault. I mean. I disagree with that. I feel like I was telling him what he wanted to hear. So, let me ask you this, Mictol. Mm. What happens when you tell a megalomaniac what he wants to hear? Oh, I mean, obviously. Obviously, Lucius made the made a really poor decision on that ship. Let's not be... Let's not be Did he? That's mince words. He made a really poor decision. Are, are we calling that a poor decision? Yeah. Yeah, no. I, 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 I feel it was a poor decision. I don't know. I think it worked out. I mean, for everybody but Seeker. Lucius didn't die, so I guess, yeah, I guess it did kind of work out for him, specifically. So, hey, Nodal... The fly spell did not get me killed. Yeah, okay, so, Nodal, question. Are you now, like, a double soulless uh, homunculus? No, because the thing is, is, like, when you die and you don't have a soul, they've got to put one back in there. Oh, uh, okay. It's like, it's a... Rotating door, sort of. It's like, take a penny, leave a penny? Is that what we're going here? So last campaign, I invented a character, and I told you all that I gave him a name without thinking about what the actual name was. I just pulled it out of the hat. And his name ended up being Handax. Uh-huh. And for the rest of the campaign, I don't think anybody believed that I actually gave him the name Handax. Because he was actually equipped with Handaxes. And I yeah. didn't realize my horrible mistake until I went to say something like, Handax attacks you with his Handax. Or something equally dumb. Something similar happened with Sigurd Tensails. In that I think I unconsciously based him on a character without realizing it. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I created this character and I'm running his notes and I built, like, a mental image of him. I was doing some looking through some old assets for my villainous decks. And I found the character that I accidentally based him on. And I'll paste that in the party chat here and in the Twitch chat. Without a doubt, Sigurd Tensails is Redis from Final Fantasy. Uh, oh, sure. Oh, That's fine. yeah, absolutely. Like, I see. Who doesn't like Redis? <laughs> Sigurd Tensails does not seem to have unlimited castings of Arise, so. Probably not, though. If he does, I want to hear about it. Because I feel like I got robbed. Exactly. So, the reason why Nodal is, is is spun up about that is Sigurd Tensales had some horses that some kind soul gave to him uh, at a port before he arrived here, and it turns out those horses were ugly, stupid demon monsters that deal 5d12 damage on hit. Which and might be a typo. It might, do they have multi-attack? Yeah. They did, but they can't multi attack with claws. It was a claw bite situation. Ah, not a claw claw. Okay. Well, I, then. So, Nodal got, Nodal got on the business end of that, and Brick Road had some hot dice and killed Nodal instantly. Listen. Again. I can't blame him for that. You get some horses, they turn out to be demon horses. It just happens. <laughs> Things happen. And so now, so now we're down to uh, three extra lives. <laughs> I'm just like on the board, like I'm, I'm just on board of like it being nodal all five times. <laughs> that's probably likely. <laughs> I mean, I think that's what happened in the very first campaign, though. Is I think nodal was dying every other major combat. He took a break in the second campaign because it's literally impossible to kill a druid. <laughs> like you can't do it without cheating. Wendy didn't die. Uh, Wendy was extremely powerful. Wendy no, got she didn't. turned into a gold statue and urinated on for 60 years. Yeah, but listen. 
That was a cutscene. We all did. <laughs> that was a cutscene. <laughs> That's like blaming Mahogany for getting turned into a a gem. I, I do blame Mahogany for that. I got no saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> So some other stuff happened. Lucius ended up, you know, getting in, getting it, getting in over his head again. As as that that's where he's happiest. Let's be honest. Speaking of Lucius getting over his head, the morning yeah. of the twenty second, so the day after, Ten Sales arrives in town. So we're, we're down to three. I just want to make sure I'm keeping care, track of my notes right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's on. It's in haste books. Okay. I have a counter here too. Don't worry. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Lucius, you received two separate missives uh, early that morning. The first is that Oswald, the 56 cards, has a word with you. The second is a letter from your father, essentially saying, you have one month during that time, you need to set up eyes at the Keyskin Embassy. Mm -hmm. The third thing that happens is all of the livestock aboard the Whistler is marched out into the various town squares in East Harbor, uh, in West Harbor, and in the Market District, and is summarily slaughtered. And all of the meat is butchered, and it's given away to the people of Dunfoss. And they're... The two prevailing opinions, on one hand, he's doing this as an offering to the people of Dunfoss to get them on his side to vie for his... Uh, his game for the throne. Ancient. On the other hand, people are saying maybe he's doing it to make sure more animals from his ship don't turn into demons and kill moss caps in the street. And wizards. Eh, yeah, wizards. Kind of. Wizards are more mineral than animal. <laughs> what? <laughs> moss caps are a vegetable. I feel like if they were more mineral, they'd have a higher AC. What? That's very what... soft mineral. <laughs> Solid what the urgency? Did I get a sense of the urgency at which of which Father Oliver wanted to see me? Like, is this a see me first thing in the morning or no? Just to know that the... okay. he has he needs to have a word with you. Okay. So let's get a morning okay. action. Oh, we spoke briefly before I went live about. Do you guys want to? If you guys want to set up a communal thing where you guys can keep track of all your open cases? Uh, or do we want to keep flying by the seat of our pants? Either way is fine, because either way I don't have to do any work. Uh, hmm. <laughs> I, I mean, one would be pretty beneficial, but the other is more thematic. Personally, I thank Trouble for volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> so just to make sure that our notes are aligning what i have listed here is you have various open cases because you guys have started quote unquote working for a bunch of people regarding the flying pig like you've got one case and then when you solve it like 18 people will owe you money <laughs> uh you have choreo fireblood your patron you have the Warlock insurance scam that you're pulling on people. And you have Daisy Neri the Drow, who you're supposed to find a husband, a husband for. for. Oh, shit. Yeah, she's a thing, huh? We had one person on that list. I just don't remember yeah. who it was. Henrik Skilder. Who? What is he? Hendri Henrik Skilder. He owns mining rights for iron outside of the city. Okay. How many names did she want? Uh, as many as we can swing, I think. They didn't. She didn't specify, but she wants names that are going to be viable, like names that you actually think, uh, based on your expertise, living in the city, having been a citizen, knowing the various noble houses. Um, she wants names I, that are actually going to be viable candidates. Like, don't just roll up with a list of every guy in Dunfoss. Uh, yes, yeah, so I was I was actually thinking about doing some work on this if I can't continue working on the puzzle book because I think I already I just finished that. I've got Yeah, you just finished the long rest. Yeah. The riddle book. Has... Uh so I was thinking I could go to the uh to the 
to look at the actual records and like the birth and death records and just you know kind of work out what nobility exists that don't have heirs that are you know i mean i don't if it's if i can find out what races there are i'll say old age otherwise i'll just say over you know 50 60 okay. and where are you going to do this research uh i believe i've done research like that before in the palace district but it was kind of nondescript okay I mean, I'll probably have to bribe somebody, but... That's Palace fine. District has a lot of old manor houses. What you have to keep in mind is that there's, like, no central building yeah, yeah. that has government records. Right. Uh, what you might like to do would be find somebody who has a history of keeping track of these kinds of things. Because there are no shortage of people who keep fastidious records of various lineages and bloodlines in these kinds of... Like sort pseudo medieval Renaissance. Yeah. Somewhere yeah. So I'm gonna, that, that'll be my midi that'll be my morning action. We'll be investigating that. All right. Uh, question then yeah. on that uh, particular the the drow marriage thing. Do you think you guys think we should send uh, prospective candidates as we find prospective candidates, or wait until we have a list? She specifically asked for a list. Okay. Yeah. And she told you that she's in no particular hurry, so she'd rather the job get done correctly than have the job be rushed. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's not exactly a high priority, but you know, if she comes walking around and say, "Hey, how's it going?" and we'd rather have something to show her rather than nothing. I mean, if she walks around saying, "Hi, how's it going?" I'll eat all her apples again. <laughs> so what is Gus doing this morning? Uh, Gus. Oh, uh, what was the what was everybody's opinion on hiring uh, Hecram to investigate, like to talk to his Moscat buddies? You're lucky I didn't turn him into the Moscaps while I was arrested. <laughs> so here's the thing, we're not going to pay him. <laughs> so anything you can get him to do for free and clean up his own messes, you are welcome to do. If you want to make that man feel like he's being useful. Uh. So what is Gus know. doing this morning? Uh, Gus is going to, um, go to, I wanted to go back to the White Heart District to look at the entrance to the, uh, the underground area where we were, just to see if, like, what matches up with what we, what information we were given. Okay. Like, I don't want to, I'm not going to try to go in or anything, I just want to, like, walk around and look. Verify for myself. For now. Okay. Don't really have anything else. And what about Florian? Do me last. And I, I want to hear what everyone else is doing before I go off and do dumb Florian shit. What about Lucius? Lucius actually has a little bit of an agenda today. He needs to procure a new either spell focus or get some spell components. Okay. Uh, spell focus, that... That has an actual price tag in the PHB. That's something you can... I believe it does, yeah. Easily find if you just go shopping for the morning. Easy enough. Okay. Then yeah, I'll do that. What about Seeker? You need your spellbook to prepare spells, right? But you don't need it to actually cast them during that day, do you? You just need your Ooh. spell focus. No, I you don't. I just need my spell focus. Well, I... I'm, I'm not talking about you in particular. I'm talking about, like, wizards. Correct. That is correct. In fact, if you if your spell book is destroyed, then you 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 can yes, continuously change. you can continuously cast the spells you had memorized, but you're just kind of boned. You can't learn new ones. Uh, can I borrow your spell book then for a bit, um, Florian? I would like to copy invisibility from it because it would have been real useful for my familiar to have that the other day. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Absolutely. So that's what Seeker's doing this morning? Yeah. What spells do I have prepared? <laughs> Florian, it's just you. You're last. All right. Let's go visit the, I think it's the lighthouse, the trinket shop. Okay. And with the explicit purpose of finding either some sort of head or bust or some sort of flump related artwork. <laughs> You're not going to find a bust of a flump because they don't have a torso. Statue. Could you find a could you find a flump statue? I, I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Uh, so Lucius, go ahead and spend the money for your new spell focus. Okay, yeah, I think I'm gonna go for a. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna go for a wand. Actually, no. What was your old one? It was a. It was a. Uh, it was an orb. Yeah, I'm gonna go with it. orb. Uh, Alex, give me a. Are you going to be trying to pay for this information, or are you just going to try to yeah, set up Yeah, if, if I have to bribe people, it's not a big deal. Okay. Uh, how much money are you willing to invest in this investigation this morning? Uh, let me get that tab open. Uh, let's say five gold. Okay. Make me a charisma investigation check. Mm -hmm. Add advantage and spend the five gold. So. Proficiency minus two. Okay. Eighteen. Eighteen. So right now you have one guy on your list, Henrik Skilder. Go ahead and concoct three more potential men to add to the list. Okay. And write just a line or two about each one. You know what website this calls for. <laughs> uh, Seeker, is there any check or anything involved in copying it over? Or is it just... No, just a... Uh... Uh, expenditure of money and time. Okay, go ahead and do that. Yep. Gus. Yeah. How close do you want to get to these guys? Because remember, that entrance was down kind of towards the end of an alley. I just want to get. Affairs. I just want to get close enough till I can verify. Just, I just want to verify that it is in fact guarded the way it, <laughs> it was said it was. Excuse me. Okay, go ahead and make a. So I guess what I'm asking is, are you just kind of walking by the street and glancing into the alley? Uh, I am not going to make an effort to be super stealthy. I'm just kind of trying to play it nonchalant, like I'm walking by. Okay. If I can get a look at it by just glancing down the alley, I'll do that. If I if it requires me walking like in front of the, is it a dead end alley? Is it a blind alley, or is it does it's, it go from one street to another? It's a dead end alley, and the nature of the alley is such that if you enter into it and there are moss caps there standing guard, you will be noticed. Uh huh. So I guess that's okay. the question: is do you care if you're noticed or not? Uh. Not really, because right. I'm not going. I'm not going to try and go into it. I'm just going to kind of act like I took a wrong turn. If I get noticed, go ahead and make a perception check. Whoop. Okay, that is perception. That is a twelve. Twelve. And how are you dressed today? Just. Same thing I'm always dressed in. Like, whenever I go out, I'm wearing my armor. Okay. I don't have any of my weapons. I do have my shield on my back, though. But I don't, I'm don't. i not armed, currently. Does your shield have a standard on it of any kind? No, it's just a... Um, just a basic... Like, I guess, heater shield or whatever. Seeker. No. Yeah. Why does the muscle of the group... Why do you not have the Flump Inc. logo emblazoned upon his shield? <laughs> no, don't. That's an excellent like, question. Like, it, if it, you it, had it, a company it, car, you would. No, yeah, you're right. It, listen, no, listen. If it did have a symbol on it, it would literally be the a uh, symbol of the mercenary group that he was on, because that's where he got his equipment. But... I think, I think that's wrong, and you know it. So here's the problem, <laughs> right? And here's our here's our reason. Because when we do get him a shield that has it, it's going to be a second shield. Because occasionally we want him to do things and not be visible as a member of the party. <laughs> so, walking by the alley, you do confirm that there are two moss caps in the alleyway. Are, are they moss caps that I recognize? Not just glancing by with a 12, can't tell. Okay. That was just you walk by the alley, 
took a look down, kind of craned your neck in, and kept on walking. Um, I'm going to approach the moss caps, and then if one of them is I recognize, I'm going to strike up a conversation. And if they they're not one of the ones I recognize, then I'm going to uh, tell them I'm sorry. I thought you were a different moss cap, and then give them a name of somebody I recognize. So as you enter the alley. Uh, you don't recognize either of them, but as you enter the alley, they take notice as you come in, and one of them calls out to you, Oi, you there! And then I'll, I'll wave at him. And the two and of them see. look back and forth, and one of them whispers something to the other one while you hail back. And then I'll approach them and say, I'm sorry, I thought you were... And I'll give them a name of a moss cap that I recognize. As you start approaching them, and you're speaking to them, the one that's whispering to the other man stops, looks in your direction, and hefts his pike downward towards you. Says, all right, that's far enough. I'll hold my hands up in a placated gesture and say, okay, and I'll take a step back. And he looks you up and down. Like I said, I'm not armed. Runs off a, just a list of crude physical descriptors that he was given. So you're one of the flump boys, ain't you? Yes, sir. Yeah, we were warned about you a lot. Told you might be coming sniffing around here. Mm. Well, I'm not having my my monthly wages docked. And he kind of pokes at you in your direction, indicating you should leave the alley. Okay. I wasn't going to do that. It wasn't going to do anything, but okay. And he kind of and... disparagingly, yeah, I'm sure you wasn't going to be no kind of trouble, was you? Yes, I'm going to, like, considering the stuff that was down there, I'm not going to go down there by myself. Ever. And I, I sh shudder a little bit and turn around and leave. What is your passive insight in Sigit? Oh, uh, 11. 11, okay, you don't notice shit then. No, uh, insight is 8. I'm sorry, that was my <laughs> passive perception. Then, you've then if there was shit, you wouldn't notice it. Right. Oh, man, like I've got it on the bottom of my boots now. Oh, man. But you do confirm, yeah, there's a couple of moss caps there, and they've been given descriptions of you and your you and your pals. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you do for the rest of the morning, kind of hanging out in the Whiteheart District? No, I'm going to go to, uh, I guess I'll go day drinking. There's nothing else that any, that we have that I could really reasonably accomplish. Yeah, Lord knows Flumping doesn't have any work you can do. I mean, <laughs> there's stuff I could attempt to do, and it would just probably end up bad. Uh, hey, however you gotta justify your day drink, man. Florian. Yeah. Yes, sir. Heading down to Gondro's Point. Yep. Your good buddy, Nelwyn Badgersby. So, mm -hmm. how much stuff have you bought here since the campaign started? None. Yeah, I kind of feel like we established that you're always in here buying stuff. No. But in the campaign, you just keep going there and then not buying stuff. You're, you're a window shopper now. Well, the good news is, is that Florian has a job for Nelwyn, Nelwyn Badgersby. Okay. And that is to find some sort of flump statue or other physical artwork to this Since. end yep if you guys may or may not remember the lore from the very first campaign but way out far 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 to the southeast high in the mountains is a monastery called zrazat mm -hmm. and entrances to the underdark are in the mountains in the area and this particular monastery is devoted to dream seeing, which is facilitated by their proximity to the flumps that have these kind of crazy psionic abilities to make you hallucinate things. And there's great debate amongst the magical colleges of Dunfoss about whether these hallucinations given travelers that make the pilgrimage out to Zrazat are useful or not. I'll say that's the extent to what 
Florian would know about the situation as far as the place of flumps in this region. Mm -hmm. And what is Florian's opinion on the situation? This man who <laughs> believes in many truths. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I think the experience alone would be something worth doing. Is it on his bucket then, list to make that pilgrimage? I think it has to be, yeah. Yeah, I kind of like... <laughs> like... Yeah. Plant that seed in Florian's head. <laughs> so what is the... Uh... So right away... Uh, <laughs> what good old Badgersby has in his in his stores currently is he has a set of prayer beads from one of these monks at Zrazat who had come through Dunfoss some years ago and he shows you these beads and it's difficult to tell what kind of material they're made out of at first there's no iconography on them. They don't look little. They don't look little heel slimes or anything, but it looks like each bead might be made of a different material, and the the set as a whole have very psychedelic colors. Interesting. Okay, so that's what he has in the shop, like today. Right. How much does he want for that? Uh, whatever the price for a holy symbol is in the PHB. Man, you're going to make me go get my PHB. That's fine. I mean, that's what you're supposed to have when you play D&D, &D, yeah? I got it right here. Was... Damn, you got you got scolded. I was making a joke. You just got mother hand. That was more of a sass than a scold. <laughs> yeah, I did. That, that, yeah, I would categorize that more as a sass. <laughs> it was borderline scold. <laughs> It was like a deluxe sass. <laughs> so, but you're what you're asking him for is like actual flump iconography. Correct. As far as statues and things go, like you probably have to have one commissioned. However, oh, okay. Infrequently on the art circuit, from time to time, you will find tapestries made by the peoples at Zrazat and. They claim that they weave some of the flump psionic energy into these tapestries, which themselves are made out of bizarre swirling patterns and lots of psychedelic colors. He doesn't have one on hand. It's not really the kind of thing he collects. Uh, but for a finder's fee, he could put his ear to the ground. And puts you on the short list to be notified. He does have art contacts inside the city of Dunfoss and abroad. Some collectors that he might tap. How much are you willing to pay him for this service? Well, Florian specifically wants, like, a statue or a... Or preferably a statue of some kind. So I think it sounds like maybe getting it commissioned is the way to go here. Mm -hmm. So, but that holy symbol... Sounds really interesting, and I can't seem to find the price for it. So, Florian might buy that just because it's a neat little thing. I mean, if it, it, I thought Holy Symbol had a price tag in there. If not, we can just call it a focus. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it does. I'm just flipping through it since... <laughs> I'm flipping through it really quickly since... Camera's on me at the moment. Holy Symbol, Amulet, Emblem, or Reliquary. Yeah, there you go. They're all yeah, the same. Go. They're just all the same cost. Content. Five... Five gold Five pieces. Gold oh, it's going to be all of Florian's money that he raised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Five gold it is. Hey, you buy these extremely psychedelic, multicolored prayer beads. Cool. All right. Thank Badgers B for his time and head on back. He does inquire as to why you want this thing. Well... It occurs to me that I work for a company called Flump Inc., and we have no Flump iconography. I would like to set that straight. 
<laughs> Told you, dumb Florian shit. <laughs> By commissioning a statue. Okay. Yeah. I think. I think when like when you said looking for flump iconography, I was kind of half expecting you to just get a piece of tarp and paint it yourself. <laughs> he does ruminate well, on the level of skill that will be required to build a statue of a creature that floats in the air and has hundreds mm-hmm. of dangling tentacles coming off the bottom of it. Mm-hmm. Yes. He also comments that flumps are not the most aesthetically pleasing creatures to look upon. <laughs> um. <laughs> no comment. <clears throat> To which Florian says, well, that is how you perceive them. It's purely on an aesthetic, pleasing to view value. Whereas the meaning of the flump and what it represents is so much deeper. It is only but one aspect of the flump. Infinite flumps. He asks if it's true that flumps fly around by, I mean, you know, looks back and forth to make sure you're the only one in the shop. He leans forward. Farting? I haven't had the pleasure. Of... <laughs> I haven't had the pleasure of ever meeting a flump, so I can't say one way or the other. But if some people say that is how it is, and there must be some truth to it in one way or another. Says so I'll be honest with you. If the only way I was able to fly was by, you know, I think I'd prefer to just walk. Wind. Anything else you want with Badgersby? Nah. This was very beneficial. Do you feel sufficiently badgered now? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Alex. Who did we come up with that I should add to my list here? Uh, I've got three here. Let me finish typing them if you can come back to me. Sure. I mean, that that was it. Everybody else's morning action is done. Uh, Well, I can give you the... Here, give me, give me twenty seconds. Sure. Okay. Well, how about that? While I'm drinking, uh, what is everybody's kind of? Is it? I'm, I'm. Is anybody talking about ten cells in the bars? Oh, nobody's talking about anything else. Holy crap! Are you yeah. kidding? The man showed up in his ship, sailed directly into the King's Harbor. That was. I mean, you were there. Obviously, you've seen the yeah. seen it happen. The tales are being told many different ways. Make a. Make a charisma check. Oh, God. Uh, That's like a four. What is your outward disposition towards Sigurd Tensales? Like, as you're out there drinking and interacting with people, how do you portray yourself as feeling about the man? Uh, I mean, overall, I'm pretty neutral about him. Okay. I think he's an asshole, but, like, what elected official isn't an asshole, especially in Dunfoss? Okay. So kings aren't elected. Well, I'll they tell are you this. Elected. <laughs> I'll tell you this: the uh, opinion that Sigurd Tensales is an asshole is a minority opinion, indeed, amongst the the drunkard crowd. As you're out and about in the city, you hear the stories of the escapades from yesterday. But he sails into the king's harbor, and he burned down these noble ships, and these monsters sprang from the deck, and there was this harried battle. You hear the stories told ten different ways. Mm-hmm. By way more people than you can possibly imagine were there to witness it. Mm-hmm. Does anybody, like, does anybody say anything about us? Probably not unless you bring yourselves up. I was just wondering. I'm not going to bring it up. I just was wondering. I'm just listening. People watching. Okay. Uh, There are tales of the people that were there on the docks, like in High Court's Harbor, that were fighting off the monsters. But the descriptions of these people vary wildly. Mm -hmm. Uh, Some of them are pretty accurate. Some of them apparently know who you and your peoples are. Uh, Some of them say that Ten Sail single-handedly brought them down. Others insist that Journey or Shem with Surefoot were there doing the fighting. You can tell that yesterday was a day in Dunfoss that many, many legends will be written about. Mm-hmm. 
what's the general disposition of the common man in the bar on like po it's a positive opinion right uh, for tin cells i would describe it as perhaps well your passive insights an eight yeah yep 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 <laughs> also uh, i'm drunk probably make me an insight check Cool. That's a. It's it's the alcohol. That's an eighteen. Uh, makes me makes on, me more an empath. On a scale of one to ten, how much risk is Gus willing to take on to get this information? Because he's going to have to put himself into other people's conversations about ten sales. Mm -hmm. And if your outward disposition is that you think the guy is an asshole. No, I, like I said, neutral. Like I said, it's it's more of a neutral. Like right, personally, but then you I got an a... eight on your charisma roll. Right. So, how much risk? I mean, uh, let's His see. His name is Ten Sales. Let's be honest. I mean, like it depends on how drunk I am currently. Uh, how drunk are you? <laughs> on a scale of one to ten, I would say I am currently sitting at a. How much liquid courage? <laughs> we'll just, you know, go with ten. There, like, I would say, like, I'd probably like an eight or a nine. But if you're gonna do eight or nine, you might as well just go ten. All right. Uh, Good man. And you're not armed at the moment, right? No. Okay. The mood of some people, I would describe as hysterically optimistic. Because remember, ten sales came sailing into town gave word that he would give a box of gold to every citizen of Dunfoss if they put him on the throne. So some people are here literally drinking away what paltry life savings they have because good King Maximilian, probably already dead, they just haven't made the announcement yet, Ten Sales is going to sit the throne by the end of the week and we're all going to be rich. <laughs> and that's when, at one bar or another, uh... Probably a bar in Wharf Town. Somebody catches wind that you're not the biggest Ten Sales fan. And six or seven burly brutes out drinking the morning away take issue with this. Mm -hmm. And the issue comes to blows. So here's the decision Gus has to make. You're drinking in a place where you're a sort of known quantity. You worked in Wharf Town quite a lot. You worked nearby. Uh, some people know you as one of the people that fought off these monsters at High Court Harbor yesterday. How does Gus react when the fists start flying? When you're not enthusiastic enough about ten sales? I mean, just a difference of opinion, so... You know, like right, stuff like that the, happens in bars all the time. So you just, you literally just thump each other and go on about your life. Okay. How hard do you thump these guys? I mean, I'm going to probably into unconsciousness. So you're going to be unconscious? Like, not like necessarily. Un well, you know, <laughs> I'm going to, I will defend myself until they stop attacking me. Make a. This is the unlikeliest roll I've ever rolled in my life. <laughs> I just rolled four d20s, and all four of them were eights. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how I did that. Make a strength check. Make a strength check. I feel like I've angered a bog witch now. Okay, make a strength check. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that is... I'm gonna use two blips and re-roll that because that's oh, a that's okay. a five. Okay. Blips are coming off. Oh, okay. So that's a fifteen. Okay. I still have all your blips on here from last week that I haven't deleted yet. So let me go ahead and get rid of all of those. Okay. Let me see. So that puts me at four. Gotcha. Thumb at a few guys, but the fight kind of spills out into the road a little bit. And more and more people become involved. 
emotions are running high because of this promise of gold and all of these legends circling around and people have been drinking. Some of these guys haven't stopped drinking since yesterday afternoon. First of all, let's go ahead and take six points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. If you thumped a couple of these guys and it becomes clear that the barkeep spills you all out into the road. And a bigger crowd begins forming. And now you can kind of see that some of this crowd has something to prove. Because you're Gustavus. You've thumped a lot of people in Wharftown. There's allegations that you were there fighting off the monsters with Sigurd Ten Sails. And now people are starting to hear and yell in the street that you're his enemy. That you have no love for the man. That you prefer... They accuse you of wanting everybody on the throne except Sigurd Ten Sails. To hear them say it, they're not your biggest fans. And then the weapons start coming out. Hmm. Swords and daggers. Gus is going to look at them and say, and ask him if they really want to do that. Oh, they really do. And he's going to look at him and say, all right, if you're going to come at me, you better come correctly. Because if you don't, I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> and he summons his hammer to his hand. Make and a... pulls out his shield. What's your spell casting? It's intelligence, right? Right, yeah. Make an intelligence intimidation check. Okay. Uh, that is... Fifteen? No, sixteen. A couple of the people start backing off. But you set a 10 when it comes to risk. Mm -hmm. That means I reach deep <laughs> down in the bag of tricks. A man, a young man, calls out from somewhere in the crowd. Calls out something like, Oi, I've heard of his kind. They're warlocks. They get their magic from demons. They pull weapons out of nowhere. I've seen it happen. And the crowd now turns from, This is Gustavus, enemy of Sigurd Ten Sails, to... Gustavus is an evil warlock. And some of the men that are breaking away, uh, you hear some of them say, well, they're going to go and fetch the moss caps and have them sort this. Two of them advance on you with swords. Mm -hmm. So let's roll some initiative. Okay. We'll see how well it goes for these guys. That's a seven for me. A seven? Go ahead and place uh -huh. yourself there. <sighs> now I feel bad for having type so fast. <laughs> I don't feel uh, bad at all. I was literally just trying to buy you a little time. <laughs> and then... Go ahead. So one of the men has... A pretty beaten up looking longsword. The other man is just holding a dagger. Mm -hmm. uh, the bigger of the men is definitely not you sized, but it didn't seem like your show of, you know, saying, oh, you might get hurt and summoning your weapon to your hand. It didn't seem to phase him much at all. The other guy who's approaching you seems to only be doing so because his friend next to him is giving him the courage to do it. So let me uh, summon in. A red guy and a yellow guy here. Mm -hmm. Red guy is the big guy with the sword. Yellow is the little guy with the dagger. And the little guy is the one that's getting courage from his friend, right? Yes, at the moment. Okay. All right. Friend. Big guy wins initiative, and he comes at you with speed and strength that tells you that he's got some martial training. Mm -hmm. Three attacks, huh? Let me list this guy's hit points so I know when you've murdered him. This guy has three attacks? Wow. Neat. Uh, yeah, we'll start here. Okay. I have 
This one might actually hit. Mm-hmm. A 26 to hit. Oh, yeah, that hits. Let's go ahead and deal nine points of bludgeoning damage. Mm-hmm. And you are a medium or smaller creature, so please give me a strength saving throw. DC is 15. No, that is a fail. A fail. He comes in with the pommel of his sword across the side of your head and sends you reeling to the ground. You've in right out of the gate, you're like, oh, I've underestimated this guy a little bit. <laughs> and you're knocked prone, which means he gets to roll his other two attacks at advantage. Mm-hmm. Both of them, I think, are going to miss, though. I've got a 12 to hit. Uh, no. And a 21 to hit. Uh, that does hit. Okay. With his longsword. 12 points of slashing damage. <laughs> and the bite of this guy's sword and the way that he knocked you to the ground and is coming in at you tells you that in no uncertain terms this man intends to claim some glory by destroying Tensail's enemy and then having people tell the tale of how he mer- essentially beat you down in the road after the facts. And that's going to bring us to Gus's turn. Okay. Uh, Gus is going to stand up. Mm-hmm. He is going to uh, second wind. Okay. Right, bonus action. Yep. That is five plus. What is my second one? So it's ten hit points. Gotcha. Get ten hit points back, and then I'm going to uh, beat this man within an inch of his life with my hammer. Wow, let's do it. Uh, so this is a booming blade. Sure. So to be clear, you're using magic out in the open with a pe- lots of people watching you in the road. I'm drunk. Also, I miss, so it doesn't do anything anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I'm going to action surge. Sure. And it's just going to be two regular swings. So that is a... 9 plus... Oh, gosh. I think it's 7. Yeah, so that's a 16 to hit. 16 does hit. The man's not wearing any kind of armor. He's just got a got an old beaten sword belt around his waist. Right. So that's ten points of bludgeoning damage. And I'm like, if I do knock this guy, I'm not going to kill them. There's okay. going to be no death. This is I'm going for, you know, unconscious. Gotcha. And well, I'm running rolling poor today. That is a ten to hit. Ten does not hit. Mm-hmm. A littler guy comes in with his dagger. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you stand up or are you still laying on the ground? I'm standing up. Okay. And I have a 13 to hit. No. Let's see if my man can knock you back down. I have a 16 to hit. No. I have a 15 to hit. No. I have a 13 to hit. No. So this does seem to be his tactic. This does seem to be his tried and true thing. It's come at you strong with the pommel of his blade, knock you to the ground, and then from there go in for the bites. And what this tells you that though he's a skilled fighter, he's really a skilled brute. Mm -hmm. Like he's not trying to create openings and go in with his sword. He's trying to knock your ass to the ground so he can butcher you. And that's back to your turn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh... I guess I'll just attack him again. Okay. That's all I can do. Let's see. That is an 11 to hit. 11 does not hit. That is... Gosh, that's a nat one. I'm rolling very poorly. I need to... You know what? Hold on. (laughs) Put that one back in the bag for later. (laughs) Wow, getting superstitious (laughs) about virtual dice. Yep. Brick Road, this is, this is not a new thing here. Let's Mo- be honest. Moving or staying put? I'm going to stay put. These guys don't scare me. Little guy with the dagger also misses. As you're kind of dancing around each other in the street. That might do it. 
Uh, looking at a 22 to hit. Uh, shield. And yeah, I know. So that makes your AC what? Uh, 24. So he goes in once more with a pommel strike, and you throw up the shield as a reaction. And the recoil from it, I mean, it's unmistakable that this was magic being used. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for a 24, so that's not going to do it. And that's definitely not going to do it. And it's back to your turn. Okay, I'm just going to hit him with my hammer. Twice. Uh, that is a 26. 26 will hit. Okay, uh... And the second one is an 18. Also hits. So the first hit is 7 bludgeoning, and the sec second hit is 6 bludgeoning. Okay, and you're staying put right there with him? Mm-hmm. Lots of fights still left in this guy, even though you managed to bring the literal hammer down on him a couple times. Little guy with the dagger. Just... I have 19 to hit. Is the, sh the shield still... The shield lasts until... The start of my next turn? So no, you wouldn't have no, it's... A... no, I wouldn't have it. Yeah, no. 19 hits. 19 will hit. All right. I have too many Rubik's Cubes on my side table here. Uh, two points of mm -hmm. stabity stabity damage. Mm -hmm. You should put numbers on them and roll them as giant D6s. No, I should just say it was one of the Kraken Priest daggers from last campaign. <laughs> uh, the big guy... One at this point, you start hearing moss caps shouting off in the distance. Uh, a patrol of them, so three moss caps, are running down the street in your direction. They'll be here probably this time next round. Mm -hmm. As they're kind of making their way through the crowd. Big guy can get you. It's going to be a 17. Nope. It's going to be a 23. Uh... Shield. Shield? Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a 12. Nope. How many more shields do you have in you? One. One, and that's your turn. Yep. That is a 16 to hit. 16 hits. That is seven points of bludgeoning damage, and the second one is a 12 to hit. 12 does not hit. Okay. Okay. And you're staying put right there? Yeah. The dagger comes in. Like, you're just... You're thinking, like, man, if I just didn't have this little dagger asshole that dancing with me here, I'd be able to get a lot good, a lot better hits. 